Church, we are so glad that you are joining us with us this morning for worship and for ministry in the Word. Uh, if you're watching there at home or, or wherever you are on your device, we are glad that you are watching with us. We miss you here in-house in the church with us, and um, I'm happy to say that next week we will be opening up at our normal times uh, next week for uh, 9.30 for the walk uh, Sunday school in the back with Sister Denise Crumpton and Bill Crumpton, and then we will have our worship service in here at normally scheduled time at 10.30. So um, we're looking forward to getting back maybe to some normal things there, but we do miss uh, seeing your faces, but we are glad that you are uh, tuning in with us and watching here with us this morning. I have a few announcements of the, some things that are going to be coming up. I want to remind you that we are open on Tuesday nights from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock here at the church for prayer. So I invite you and your families to come and join for corporate worship. Uh, those don't aren't, won't be online. The only time that we have online prayer is on that first uh, Tuesday of the month. The rest of the time we are having it is just not online. So do come out and join with us. Those are on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock to 8 for prayer. On September 23rd, we've got our drive through lunchbox event that's coming up. So if you have um, a remember of that, we are giving out 150 boxes of food for uh, families to help with lunches for the kids that are going back to school. And our goal is 150. We do need your help to make that happen. So if you haven't already donated, uh, you can do that through purchasing items. And we have a list here that you can pick up here at the church. Um, I believe you can also find that list online. Or you can donate uh, money that will always help go toward the goal of reaching those 150 families is what we would like to reach with those food boxes. So uh, if you haven't done that, that's coming up on September the 23rd is when that event will take place. So we'll need all those items in that Sunday before. And then on October 13, we'll have an elders meeting at 7 p.m. I believe that's all of our announcements, so uh, make a note of those. And I want to go ahead and read this morning our scripture as we go to the Lord in worship and, and as pastor comes to bring the word. I want us to read from Psalm 47. So if you have your, um, if you have your Bibles with you, I encourage you to go ahead and get them out because we need to hear, we need to read it, we need to see it. Um, and you can read along with me. But this is Psalm 47. And it says, Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with the voice of triumph and songs of joy. Now, in just a few minutes, we're going to do that. And I want you, even at home, there sitting in, on your couch or in your easy chair, I want you to get up and worship with us. We're going to fulfill and be obedient to the word. Verse 2 says, For the Lord Most High is to be feared and worshipped with awe, inspired with reverence and obedience. He is a great king over all the earth. He subdues people under us and nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, the glory and excellence of Jacob, whom he loves. God has ascended amid shouting, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises in a skillful psalm and with understanding, God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people have gathered together as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Just go with me this morning in prayer as we begin to do, to do this psalm. We're going to sing praises to the Lord. We're going to worship the Lord Most High, the God Almighty. We're going to worship Him. But go with me in prayer right now as we welcome Him. Heavenly Father, we worship You this morning. You alone are God. You alone are the King of kings and Lord of lords. You sit enthroned on the flood. Lord, we magnify and exalt Your holy name. And Lord, we welcome Your presence into this place this morning. And God, for those who are worshiping at home, 
Lord, we just pray for them right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that they will experience the presence of the Lord God Almighty right where they are, God, in their home. I pray for their families, Lord God. I pray over their hearts, Lord Jesus, that their hearts would be opened, Lord God, to receive the message of the word this morning, God. I pray. Father, that your praises would go up and that you would inhabit the praises of your people this morning, God, as we worship your name, as we exalt you, as we magnify and love you this morning. In Jesus' holy name, we pray and we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It was a glorious day when we came to know the Lord. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. It was a day that changed our lives when we come to know him. So worship with us this morning. We're going to uh, sing this song, Glorious Day. And I want you just to go ahead and join with us this morning in song. Yes, Lord, you are glorious, Father. We magnify your name. my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? The old martyr. Till I met you.
your name. Amen. We thank you, God, that you have made us brand new yes, in you, Lord. Father God. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. For the new life that we have in you, God. We have been set free. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. No longer saved it's me. I am a child of God. child of God, Lord, that you call us your child. We thank you and give you praise this morning. What amazing love that we have. Thank you, Jesus, for your amazing love. We bless your holy name. Thank you. You just worship him right where you are. Just thank him for his great love, for all that he's done for you, for all that he's done for your family and keeping you. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken, and I'm accepted. You were condemned, and I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Sing that with 
Lift your hands to the Lord right now. And just worship Him. He is worthy of this place. God, we just worship You. We magnify Your name and we exalt You in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank You, God, for all that You have done and all that You're doing. And we just lift You up and we praise You, God. Lord, we know that Your Spirit knows no limitations, no distance, no time limitations, Father. And we just pray in the name of Jesus Christ, God, as You would receive our worship and our praise to You today. Father, we give you glory and honor and praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the church said, amen and amen. I'm going to switch mics here. And uh, so if you'll just bear with me just a second. And I'm going to change over to uh, my normal mic because it's just easier for me to talk when I can use my hands. Amen. We're so glad you're joining us um, live here in-house we're excited that next week we're going to be coming to you. Uh, actually, we're going to be opening up, and you're welcome to come and join us. 
Uh, as uh, Sister Gina said, on Tuesday, we are having prayer. It is open. We encourage you to come and be with us Tuesday from 7 to 8 for our prayer meeting. And uh, we're going to take time and, and just worship the Lord in prayer and gather together. And uh, I'm excited that we're starting to get back to normal. And I want to uh, uh, just welcome you, those of you watching by live stream, those of you who are listening by the podcast. Uh, we're glad that you're here. We're excited that you are a part of uh, what we're doing. And uh, we want to uh, pray right now. I have several families who have uh, lost loved ones over the last few weeks. And we want to lift all of them up in the name of Jesus Christ and pray over them and for their family situations. And if you have a physical need, if you have a physical need in your body, I want you to do something right now. As we go to the Lord in prayer to pray over the needs that are represented by those who are watching, I just want you to lay your hand on your head or maybe on the place in your body where you're hurting or you are in need of healing. And we're going to pray that the Lord would heal you with His supernatural power. We believe that when we pray in faith that God hears and that He answers. And we're going to pray, agree together, believing that God's going to touch you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Would you join with me? Just lay your hand there on your wherever you're hurting, you're in pain. Maybe someone in your family there is with you. Go walk over, lay hands on them in the name of Jesus. Father, we come to you. God, we join our faith together, those that are here in this place, with those who are watching by live stream and those who are listening. Father, we just pray in the name of Jesus Christ, God, that you would touch and that you would heal, that you would minister your healing virtue to those, God, <clears throat> who are listening and who are watching in the name of Jesus Christ. God, that you would be honored and glorified, God, as the power of the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ for our healing. God, your, your word says, by his stripes we were healed. We receive that in Jesus' name upon those who are watching and listening to this morning. God, we lift them up in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak peace, God, where there is turmoil and unrest. Lord, we pray, God, that you would touch our families and our homes, God, and you would touch our, our children and our parents, Father, and minister, God, to our loved ones and our friends and those that we come into contact with. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us shine the light in this world of darkness, in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Uh, we are so, again, so thankful for you and your faithfulness to tune in. We want to give you an opportunity to worship the Lord in giving. And you can go to our website, wccmansfield.org, and go to the bottom, uh, the bottom of that first page, and it has a Take Action button. If you'll click on that, you can give. These last two weeks, we haven't had a lot of giving, I know, because we kind of stopped in midstream to allow something to clear up, um, but that's all cleared up, and we've got all negative tests, so uh, next week we'll be in-house, but don't forget to worship God in your giving. You can click on there and give according to uh, where you want that to go, tithe, offering, children, youth, um, women's ministries, world missions. This is our World Mission Sunday. It's the first Sunday of the month. And uh, we, our goal was $10,000 in world missions this year. And I know 2020 has been a very difficult year for a lot of people. But we want to continue to worship God in giving to world missions, to reaching around the world. We have the world in our backyard, but there are those in foreign countries that still don't hear the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we want to give to those who are on the field working in those areas to build the kingdom of God. So go online. Click on Take Action, and uh, thank you for your support. We love you. We appreciate you. And don't forget, we really need your help with our, our uh, um, back-to-school uh, boxes and bags uh, to give away on September the 23rd. And you can mark it, uh, the back-to-school, if you want to give toward that online. Or you can mail it in to 200 New Patterson Road, Mansfield, Texas, 76063. Thank you, and God bless you, and we appreciate you. If you have your Bibles, and you'll turn with me uh, to the book of Matthew, chapter 5 is where we're going to be looking from. And uh, last week I came to you from uh, Buffalo, Missouri, uh, and uh, we were uh, watching grandkids up there, and, and some people said, well, you were on vacation. It wasn't a vacation. I was feeding horses and taking care of grandkids and got absolutely no rest. <laughs> so uh, we, we are glad to be back home to where we get some rest 
And uh, we're excited uh, to be here and what God has in store. But we're going to continue on the Jesus life, characters, uh, character of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, we're going to be reading. It says, And seeing the multitude, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Would you bow your heads and join me in prayer as we ask the Lord to bless his word this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, for your loving kindness. Lord, we just ask that you would speak to our hearts, both those who are here in, in house with us and those who are watching online and listening. God, that you would touch their heart and speak to them your word. God, that the seed of your word would go forth, God, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And God, that it would take root and produce fruit. God, that lives would not just be stirred, but we would be changed by the power of your presence, the power of your Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ and the power of your word. We give you glory and honor and praise in his precious holy name. And the church said, amen. Amen. So we're talking about uh, uh, character of the kingdom. And when Jesus sat down on that mountain side and he began to speak kingdom life and kingdom principles to his disciples and the multitude that followed him, he began to give them the keys to living the Jesus life. Uh, not everyone who heard then or who hears now receives or walks in the kingdom life. And so this discourse deals with the character of the kingdom. Uh, uh, a pastor by the name of Jerry Fry talks about the Beatitudes. And he says that they are, there are seven habits within the Beatitudes that Christians need to develop. I call them kingdom principles or kingdom character things that we should pick up and should live out and walk out in our life. Uh, and the Bible tells us that when we become saved, when we're bought with the blood of Jesus Christ, old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And that means our old habits die and we replace them with new habits. And you can find them in the, uh, the kingdom principle, the kingdom character of uh, Matthew chapter 5. And so, uh, in order to learn to display the king character of the kingdom, we have to receive the rule of the kingdom. We talked about this last week. And so, there, there's a difference. There are nine different references to the kingdom in this passage of Scripture. We talked about last week, kingdom rule calls for, for humility. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That word poor means destitute of wealth, influence, position, or honor. You see, when we come to Christ, we have to recognize that it's all God and not us. We, that we have nothing to do with it. He has everything to do with our salvation. He purchased it. He gave it to us. All we have to do is begin to walk in it and, and receive it from Him. The next thing we talked about uh, is kingdom rule uh, calls for the willingness to suffer persecution. And how that uh, uh, persecution here doesn't necessarily look like persecution around the world. And, but I told you last week, we need to prepare for what's coming. I believe that we're about to face an onslaught of persecution such as the church has never seen. Uh, I believe the closer we get to the coming of Jesus Christ, the harder the devil is going to work to persecute and destroy and stop the church from doing what they're doing. What he, I don't know if he realizes or understands is this. 
historically, when persecution comes, the church gets stronger. The power go, grows greater because we learn to rely on God in those times of persecution when we haven't maybe necessarily done it before. And I'm here to tell you, now you need to be training yourself to rely on God and His power and His presence to see you through those difficult times. Kingdom rule calls for the willingness to suffer that persecution. Too many times uh, Christians today try to pray their way out of persecution. I've been guilty of that myself. But the truth is, sometimes we're put in persecution to make us stronger. We're allowed to go through persecution. Jesus said, you know, you're blessed when you face that because you're going to see the kingdom of heaven. The next thing we talked about last week is kingdom rule calls for earnest attention to God's commandments. We read from Matthew 5 and 19, says, Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said in John 14 and 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. John 15 and 10, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. We're called to walk in His love and display His love to others. And it is supposed to begin at home in the church. John 13 and 35 says, By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another or for one another. Now more than ever, we need to be displaying this. And so uh, one of the, the, the things that we have to do if we're going to walk in the character of the kingdom is we have to pay attention to what the Word of God says and obey it. Next thing we see is kingdom rule calls for the refusal to substitute false piety for genuinely right behavior. Now I want to spend, I didn't talk about this last week very much, and I want to talk about it this week. Matthew 20 and verse, Matthew 5 and verse 20 says, For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Now Jesus was looking at his disciples and he, he was saying, The Pharisees, the scribes, they bear a, a form of righteousness. They look like they're righteous. But the truth is, what they're doing isn't going to get them into heaven. You've got to have a righteousness that is greater than theirs. Isaiah 64 and 6 says this, But we are all like an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are, are like filthy rags. We, are, we all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. You see, if we try to do it in and of ourselves, if we try to live in this kingdom character in and of ourselves, by our own virtue, by our own goodness, by our own right standing, then we're in trouble because it's only through the blood of Jesus Christ and His righteousness that we are made acceptable by God or to God. And we have to learn to stand in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And that's not easy because we feel like in the church, if we're doing the things we're supposed to, we're going through the motions. I go to church on Sundays. I go to church on Wednesdays. I go to prayer meeting. I'm paying my tithe. I'm giving. But then a lot of times we don't, uh, we use our tongue to assassinate people's character, talk about people, or, or, or maybe we act in a way we shouldn't. Those are, see, we're struggling because we're not walking in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. If Jesus didn't do it, you shouldn't do it. Amen? Amen. Kingdom rule calls for us to walk in a righteousness that is greater than ours, and that is the righteousness of Christ. The next thing we find about kingdom rule, and we didn't talk about this at all last week. This is new for this week. Kingdom rule calls for a life of prayer. I want you to say that with me. Kingdom rule calls for a life of prayer. If I'm going to live according to the rules of the kingdom, I've got to have a life that is a life of prayer. We read throughout the four Gospels that Jesus would take time away from the multitude, and not just the multitude, away from His disciples, and go up into a mountain and pray. Get alone with His Father and pray. He did the miracles. He fed the 5,000. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He cast out devils. But He did it because He was spending time with the Father. Matthew 6, verses 5 through 8 says, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, 
For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the street that they may be seen of men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, everybody say, when I pray. Go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in the secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetition as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. I want to tell you something. Listen, I love the story of David. Before he was King David, before he was a, a commander in the army of Saul, uh, when he was just a shepherd boy out watching his sheep, and he was anointed to become the king at some point, but he was out in the wilderness watching his father's sheep, and his father calls him and says, I want you to take some cheese and some wine and some, some food to your brothers who are in the army of Saul. Go to the front and find them. And David went to the front, and there was a giant standing before the army and railing the army and challenging the army of God, and everybody was hiding. And David said, who's going to stop this man from doing this? Because he was blaspheming the name of Jehovah. And his brother got upset with him because he said, you just come up here to see a battle, and you're not minding your father's sheep. And David said, listen, there's a cause, there's a reason for me to be here. I'll fight this man. I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of people who try to stand up and face giants when they've never spent time with their father in the wilderness. And I'm not talking about Jesse. I'm talking about Jehovah. You see, David had spent time with God the Father in the wilderness. He spent time with his father uh, and, and he knew that his, God would be with him because God had been with him when he killed the bear and he had killed the lion and when he faced this uncircumcised Philistine, never called him a giant. He just said, I'll fight him. He's nothing but an uncircumcised enemy of the Lord. He's not just my enemy. He's the enemy of the God of my people and the God that I pray to. You see, he had spent time in God's presence. And when you spend time in God's presence, you're assured that when you face the enemy, you will be victorious. Yes. Amen. Amen. We walk around in the church saying we're more than conquerors, but the reason we lose battles and the reason we suffer defeat is because we are not spending time with God. We're allowing things to come into our life that don't belong there, and we're not focused on the presence of Jehovah. If we're going to live according to kingdom rule, we need to know what God says about our current situation, not the government. If we're going to live according to kingdom rule and, and, and we're facing a famine, we need to know what God says about kingdom rule and not the atmosphere around us. We need to focus on what God is saying and what God is asking of us and telling us to do. And we can only find that through prayer and through His Word and by His Spirit. Kingdom rule calls for a prayer life that I'm afraid the church doesn't have today. Many in the church. I'm talking about a prayer life that, that focuses in on, on, on just not asking God, can, would you do this and do that? But God, what do you want me to do for you? God, how can I fulfill this kingdom rule in my life for your kingdom come, to come? Your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. We need to, to, to find the ground for the place that we can go to God and we can have intimate communion with Him. I had a, uh, a dear, Jean and I had a dear uh, friend. She was a mentor uh, to me. She was a, 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 an evangelist and she was very powerful in, in the flow of the Spirit. And she looked at me one day. We had had her at one of the churches we were at. She's now passed on, gone on to glory. Uh, but she, uh, she uh, 
looked at me one day and she said, God wants to use you, but he'll never use you until you increase your carpet time. What she was telling me is until you increase your prayer life, God can't flow through you, not in the way that you want him to, but in the way that he desires, which is greater than anything you've ever anticipated. You see, God wants us on our face before him, saying, God, I can't do it without you. You see, we have all these ideas and thoughts and aspirations and dreams and and, and, and co- uh, concepts, preconceived notions of what God wants from us and God, what God would, can do through us. And the truth is we need to get before God and say, God, what do you want from us? God, what do we need to do for you? Kingdom rule calls for a prayer life that touches God and changes the earth. Come on now. You can find in the book of Acts, I think it's about the 4th, 5th, 6th chapter, somewhere in there. The disciples were taken before the, 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 the religious leaders and they were told to stop preaching in the name of Jesus and stop doing things in the name of Jesus. And they were rebuked and they were threatened and they were uh, 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 jailed for a little while, held. When they got loose, or they were turned loose and they went and gathered together and they, they, they prayed a prayer and their prayer went something like this. God, we thank you that we've been found worthy to be persecuted for your name's sake. Lord, we thank you, God, <clears throat> that we're doing the right thing, uh, not according to men, but according to what you've called us to do. <coughs> Excuse me. And God, we just ask that you move on us and give us strength of the Spirit to do what you've called us to do in this day. And you know what happened? The earth shook. There was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They were baptized, rebaptized, and God moved greatly upon them and through them. I, I want to be a part of a prayer movement that shakes the world. I want to be a part of a prayer movement that reignites the fire of the Holy Spirit that changes those around us. <clears throat> I have nothing against AA or Alcoholics Anonymous. I think it's helpful. But, but I, I, I look for the day when an alcoholic walks into the doors of the church and is delivered and set free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? When the drug addicts and those who are, 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 are bound by addictions that are set free and no longer in chains. Kingdom rule calls for a prayer life. And we need to find that place of prayer. Kingdom rule calls for prioritizing the spiritual over the material. Matthew 6 and 33, Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. You see, we spend a lot of time struggling, trying to attain and trying to accumulate and trying to figure out how we're going to make ends meet sometimes. Sometimes we, we wonder how we're going to make it <clears throat> Excuse me. to the end of the month. Sometimes we wonder how we're going to clothe our children and feed our children or our families and how we're going to keep the lights on and how we're going to keep uh, all the things that are in our world functioning and revolving. And I want to tell you something. And we need to be aware of this. We, I know those are important and I'm not dismissing them because I struggle with those two at times. But what I want to say to you is this. Jesus said if we will seek the kingdom of God first, he will take care of all the things that we worry about. If we will seek the kingdom of God first, our finances, our family, our future, all those things, our clothes, our food, all the things that we tend to worry and be anxious about, Jesus said, he'll take care of those if you'll seek him first. I want to tell you, it's time for the church to begin to seek God first and not our comforts. We need to stop being casual Christians. Some, someone asked me here recently, why do you think all this is happening in 2020? And, and I don't have the answer, but I can speculate. And one of the speculations that I have is this. God's trying to wake the church up. God's trying to shake the church and say, hey, wake up. 
Don't let be like the five foolish virgins who didn't have enough oil and, and their lamp ran out and the bridegroom ca came while they went and tried to buy more oil. Wake up and fill up and be prepared and light your lamp and trim your wick and make sure you have enough oil so that you are able to receive the bridegroom when he arrives. For too long, preachers have preached to their congregations what their congregations wanted to hear, not what they needed to hear. For too long, influential tithe payers have tried to affect what the pulpit's going to present. Well, I'm going to tell you something. It's time for the preachers in the pulpit to stand up and preach the unadulterated truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ it's time for the pulpits to stop being weak and anemic and have the power of the Holy Ghost it is time for the word of God to go forth thank you in the power of the Holy Spirit so that the world the church and those who are listening can be changed not by good speech, eloquent words, but by the power, the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead. It's time that we prioritize the spiritual over the material. We've got to stop being concerned about our creature comforts in, in the church. Is this pew or this chair comfortable enough? Is the temperature just right? Is the music too loud or too soft? Is everything perfect? I'm going to tell you something. If I'm involved, it's probably not going to be perfect. But if you're involved, it's probably not going to be perfect either. Because we are imperfect creatures that are housing the perfect gift of God. And we need to focus and prioritize on the spiritual and not the things that we see and feel and touch. Kingdom rule calls for us to say God first. The things of God first. And everything else will be added. Kingdom rule calls for above all. Now hear this. Because this is my last point for this message, and next week we're going to get into the particular Beatitudes. Kingdom rule calls for, above all, acknowledging Christ's lordship by obeying the revealed will of God. I want to say that again. Acknowledging Christ's lordship by obeying the revealed will of God. <clears throat> Do you know that we're living in a day and a time where whole denominations are moving away from the Lordship of Jesus Christ? <clears throat> there is a secular religion that says, that, that says there's many roads to God. There's many avenues to God. And there's more than one prophet that's speaking on behalf of those religions. A lot of celebrities a lot of people who are, who are trying to be somebody on a spiritual plane. I'm going to tell you something. Every road, every road outside of Jesus Christ is a road to hell. Every road that is not marked with the blood of Jesus Christ is a road that leads to destruction. There is only one way to the Father. And Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Above all things, kingdom rule has to acknowledge Christ's lordship. And we do that by obeying the revealed will of God. Matthew 7 and 21, Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, 
but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. You see, not everyone who cries out and says, Oh God, I prophesied in your name. I cast out devils in your name. God, I preached the gospel in your name. God, I shared that message on the street corner with the homeless in your name. God, I did this and I did that in your name. Those are all well and good, but the bottom line is we have to do the will of the Father to enter the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom rule calls for the acknowledgement of Jesus Christ as Lord through our obeying God's revealed will through His Word. Unless we, the church, are able to find our place on the mountainside of kingdom character, unless we, the church, are able to recognize and understand that it's only through Jesus Christ, there is no other way. It's only by His Spirit and His Word and His presence that we can know Him. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, we're missing the call. The crux of what Jesus said or was trying to instill into His disciples is that we must embrace the kingdom rule. We must embrace kingdom character. And we must embrace kingdom principles to truly be kingdom citizens. Gina, if you'll come to the piano. We are living in a day and a time where some say everything goes. If it's not hurting anybody else, you can do whatever you want. As I said before, there are others who are saying there are many roads to God. Others are saying that there are many gods. I've come to tell you this morning, there's only one true God. He eternally, eternally exists in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And God the Father sent the, the Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for payment for your sin. I shared with you, I don't remember if it was on Wednesday night or last Sunday, that my grandson asked a question. He said, did Jesus deserve to die? Did Jesus deserve to die on a cross? I thought about that. And my response was, no. He didn't deserve to die. We deserve to die. You and I, for the punishment and the payment for our sin, we deserve to die. You deserve to die. The Bible tells us the wages of sin is death. But God sent His Son in place of us who became our sin, became our punishment, took it on Himself. While He didn't deserve to die, He died for those who did. So you don't have to. So that you can have eternal life. Through Christ Jesus. That's why there's no other way. He's the only one who didn't deserve to die. Who chose to die for others. Jesus made this statement. There's no, no greater love that you can show. Than a man lays down his life for his friends. But I want you to know that Jesus. Laid down his life for you. When you weren't his friend. The, the Bible says that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Before we ever knew him, before you ever knew you needed him, he said, I'm going to pay the price and I'm going to die for you. So that you can have life, eternal life, through my payment.
so that you can become a kingdom citizen to live under kingdom rule a kingdom walk in kingdom character and abide by the kingdom principles that God laid out for us through his word I want to ask you right now maybe you're a believer but your life isn't really showing kingdom rule you're not really living according to kingdom principles and kingdom character maybe you've never known him and you're watching and you're considering your life I want to tell you that it's not hard to come into the kingdom the Bible tells us if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ that we can be saved. It tells us that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. If we believe here and confess here, we can know Him. What do we believe? We believe He's the only begotten Son of the Father, that He's the only way, that He died for my sin, and that I need, I need His covering. And we confess, Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. I accept, I accept the payment of Christ for my sin to cover me and bring me into the kingdom. It's that simple. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray with you this morning before we end this service. And I want to ask you, to allow the Holy Spirit to search your heart and to speak to you. If you don't know Him, today is a day of salvation. You need to know Him. If you've not been living according to the kingdom character, you've not been walking according to kingdom rule, step in His righteousness. Say, God, I want to walk with you and I want to fulfill your word in my life through the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Would you join me right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, God, you know my heart. You know my shortcomings, Father. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. God, the places that I'm not walking in kingdom character with kingdom rule and kingdom principles, I pray, God, that you would, uh, I, I submit to you to move me into those places, God. I recognize, God, that, I, that, that discipleship discipline has to take place in my life. But I also understand that if I submit to you, you will guide and direct me, help me, and undergird me and strengthen me because it's all about you. I worship you and I praise you and I magnify your holy name in the mighty name of of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior this morning, I want to tell you welcome into the family of God. The angels in heaven are rejoicing over one soul who comes into the kingdom and they're rejoicing over you today. If you've recommitted yourself or you've uh, restated your life of, uh, of renewal to the kingdom uh, rule and kingdom character, God is pleased and desires to strengthen you to fulfill his purpose and his will in this last day. Father God, we just thank you and we praise you for these who have responded. And I thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you glory and honor and praise in his holy name. And the church said, amen and amen. I want to say thank you for tuning in, for watching us. I also want to say, that if you accepted Jesus Christ or maybe you recommitted, uh, drop us a line uh, on our page, on our website, uh, on the, the feed there on Facebook. Just let us know. I committed my life. I recommitted my life. I rededicated. I, I, I'm, I'm going to walk a kingdom rule. Uh, just let us know so we can share that testimony. We're so excited. Don't forget to go to wccmansfield.org. Click the Take Action button and, and give. This week, your time bring to support the kingdom of God as we reach around the world with the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you so much for tuning in. Also, don't forget to help us with the back-to-school boxes and bags that we're giving out to our community. 
World Mission Sunday this Sunday to reach the, reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Tuesday at 7 o'clock from 7 to 8, we're having in-house prayer live here in the sanctuary. We want you to come out if you live in the Mansfield, Arlington area and join us in prayer. We love you. We will see you next Sunday in-house, 9.30, our adult uh, Bible study class at 9.30, 10.30 morning worship. Come out and be with us. We love you. We miss you. We're praying for you. God bless you.